So I had a few more thoughts about Quern. Figured I'd just go over them since I didn't have a chance to talk about all of them during the diecast. So it's kind of a diecast addendum, I guess. Uh, the first thing that struck me when I was booting up the game is that they've trademarked the word Quern, which is a little weird. Uh, normally you'd, I don't know, it seems like normally you wouldn't try to trademark the title of your game, but maybe you have to do that nowadays. Anyway, I, I don't recall seeing the trademark symbol after other titles, but I did see it after Quern in the opening screen. So that was that struck me as a little odd. Uh, the other thing that struck me as a little odd was the music. It didn't have a lot of range, dynamic range or something. It, there was something about it that, that was kind of lackluster, and maybe it was trying to ape the style of Mist, which also had kind of lackluster music. But it wasn't offensive. It was just kind of blah. Uh, it also had a, a strange mixture of, I'm pretty sure they were synthesized traditional instruments, strings and woodwinds and things. But then they had some synth instruments and they used modern composition techniques. It wasn't a, a classical composition. It was a modern composition. So it's a little bit odd. Um, maybe that was intentional. But, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I, you could give them the benefit of a doubt, I suppose. Um, so when you start the game, it, it drops you in this little area and you have to solve a little puzzle to get out of this starting area. And uh, in the opening screen, it tells you, I don't know if it always tells you this. Well, in fact, I think it doesn't always tell you this. But when it's loading, it has a little tip. And the tip I got was hold alt or control or something. I think it was, it was alt. Yeah, hold alt to, to view interactable items. And I appreciate that. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, but then it also just has like an arrow pointing at the, the first letter that you're supposed to pick up. And that didn't feel great. Like, here I am, I'm trying to explore the world. I'm trying to kind of get it in the mood, uh, get oriented. And the game is immediately like, oh, you must be lost. I'm like, I can't be lost. Come on, game. You've locked me in this room. There's only so many things here. So that was that was not a great start. And it, that kind of summarizes, I think, the approach that this game has, where it just gives you too much help uh, unasked for. And I think there was more help available than, than I used certainly more than I needed. Um, so anyway, there's a letter, and you open the letter, and it has a little narrator that reads it to you, as if the, the guy who wrote the letter is speaking it. But the way the letter is written feels like it's written not from the character in the game to your character in the game, which would make sense. But it feels like it's written from the game developer to your character in the game, which is weird. I would, I would be comfortable with the game developer writing to me, the player, uh, but the game developer talking to the character is just strange. It, they talk about like, oh, you, I guess you don't have any choice. You're just going to have to do all these puzzles. And it's like, well, hang on. Like, the the character in the game does have a choice. I mean, they, uh, spoilers for Quirin, I guess. Time doesn't pass. You don't get old and like you don't age and, and you don't need to eat and drink. So like the character in the game can just, hang out if they want like they don't have to they're not forced to do anything uh and and it's also a little weird because the character in the game the the conceit of the game is that you can only do what the game developer has let you do that's i suppose the conceit of every game but especially in this game there's like you there's areas you can walk and you have a jumping ability but it never allows you to do anything there's no jumping puzzles there's no there's no time at which you have to jump it's just there i think because they didn't turn it off when they started their unity project or something so you could if you were really there like climb around and and there's even an achievement called too lazy to climb that you get for getting into the tower by doing the puzzle to get into the tower instead of just like climbing up the tower and that's a little weird like you don't have you don't have the latitude as a developer to draw attention to the constraints of your medium like Especially when you're drawing the attention of the character in the game to those constraints. Like I said, it would be okay. It would actually be kind of neat, kind of meta, right? To, to have the, the game developer speak to the player. But it's just like, uh, speaking to the character is not, I don't know, didn't feel right. Felt strange. Um, another thing I noticed that was odd right in that very first starting area, and I think continued throughout the game, was that you're, when you hold down Alt creates this little particle effect but in order for the particles <clears throat> in order for the particles to immediately appear they pop in 
but they pop in in the wrong place. They pop in like offset from the position of the the actual objects. And I think it was probably like the where the particle system was created and then later they adjusted it. And when they adjusted it, they didn't adjust the spawn location. They just adjusted like the the emission location or something like that. And so a lot of the effects pop in in the wrong place, like in the middle of the air or something. And then as the particles die, as they age, then the new particles spawn in at the correct location. So it's just this weird thing where it's like this wasn't polished properly. And uh, or, or maybe they they fixed it in later areas and didn't fix it in the early areas or something. It, it Again, it was just like uh, a little bit of lack of polish. Same with the music, uh, same with the writing and the letters. It's just like mm, it wasn't quite polished quite all the way. Uh, also, there's a ladder in the tutorial area where you start. This is all like all things I noticed right in the very starting tutorial zone. Um, there's a ladder and you can't climb it like and I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess you can't climb ladders in this game. Well, actually, you can climb ladders in this game, but only the ladders that the game developer wants you to climb, not just any old ladder that's sitting around. There's also a part in the game where you have to, like, go get some rungs from a ladder and put them in this ladder thing. And I was, and the thought occurred to me, like, why don't I just walk back to the starting area and pick up that ladder? It's not that big. It's only about as tall as you are. And that's all that's missing from the other ladder. Why don't I just pick that ladder up and like walk back over here and, you know, get up there. Uh, you can't do that. It's not, yeah. So, not perfect. So after I left the starting area, uh, I noticed that there are some invisible walls that prevent you from getting to some places. Although, it never really felt justified because the places that I was prevented from getting didn't have anything in them. So, uh, it's not like... You know, I could have gone somewhere, but I couldn't because of an invisible wall and I needed to get there and to do that I needed to solve puzzles or something. It was just like, there's this area off the beaten track and the game won't let you walk there. Uh, and I don't know if that was like a, a clipping plane thing they set up or if it was some sort of uh, collision geometry problem that didn't get solved or, or what, but it's a little strange. Um, let's see. The construction of the buildings was kind of cool. It looks like kind of like adobe or plaster over wood and there's some places where the the plaster is worn away and you can see the wood showing through underneath which i thought was a nice touch it was like they thought about how they would actually have to build this thing kind of a lot of the puzzles and and uh machines and stuff are just nonsense machines uh like a lot of things in games where it's just it looks like what it's supposed to be but it's not actually what it's supposed to be um and you don't see gears moving a lot Anyway, but I, I appreciated that they put the work into making the construction at least make sense. Uh, there's a rope right near the beginning where you're trying to open a door. And I thought at first, like, oh, the rope is just there as a counterweight and it's locked on the inside or something. But to all appearances, that rope is there to pull the door open. And it's sitting right there in front of you. Like, it's not like a rope high up on the wall or something. It's a rope that goes right down into the ground, uh, you know, through a little... Uh, little hole in a platform or something and like and the thing that that moves it is just like a brick like a like looks like a metal brick which can't weigh more than 20 pounds and so like if you just grab that rope and pull on it you'd be able to open the door and like that was another thing where it's like this is so contrived like i can understand trying to make the puzzles part of the game and trying to or the game world obviously they're part of the game but part of the game world and trying to make them feel like they're a real thing that has real mechanics as opposed to just like you push this button and then for no reason the door opens. So they give it some justification, but the constraints on the player character that doesn't allow them to just bypass these puzzles by just grabbing the rope and pulling on it is it grates a little bit. It kind of cuts into the conceit that uh, this this is something that you, you had to solve the puzzle. You couldn't have done it some other way. And also it can, cuts into the conceit that the game developer keeps telling the player character about, oh, you just have to solve these puzzles. You don't have any choice. You couldn't, you couldn't do anything else. You couldn't shortcut it because I made sure that you could. It's like, no, you didn't make sure. It was a sloppy design. It was a sloppy construction. And like, if I was really there, there were lots of ways that I could have just bypassed almost all these puzzles. So anyway, that was, uh, that was another thing that was kind of it was neat that they made it a real machine, but it was but the danger there and the one the trap they fell into was that it was a real machine that 
could have been used in a way that wasn't intended very easily. Like, obviously, blatantly easily. Um, so there's a, a pickaxe marker at some point in the game. And there's little markers that you find around. And I thought at first, looking at them, that they were symbols of the kind of thing you needed to use to unlock that area. So there's like a symbol of a crystal. And it's like, oh, okay, I need to get some crystal somewhere to unlock this thing. And then uh, there's a symbol of like a gear. It's like, oh, okay, I need to get a gear to unlock this thing. And then there was a symbol of a pickaxe. And I was like, oh, no, because <laughs> there's rocks everywhere. It sounded like a mountain island kind of thing. And so I was like, Wait, are they going to give me a pickaxe? And then like the only place I can use it is right here in this blank wall because there's no door there. It's just like this big piece of rock. And so it seemed like the game was telling me you're going to get a pickaxe at some point, And this is where you just have to use it. You can't use it anywhere else. It's like worse than the latter thing, right? Like, oh, OK. Like, this really, really contrived kind of thing where it's like, okay, well, why don't I just, like, use this pickaxe to mine anywhere I want? Like, I don't get hungry, I don't get thirsty, I don't get tired, and I never get old, so I could just disassemble this whole island with a pickaxe. But no, actually, that was just a symbol. The area there is a mine, uh, although there are, like, hammers and, and metal implements and stuff on the island. And presumably, the guy who built this place built it using hand tools, so presumably... I could disassemble it using hand tools as well. Uh, anyway, there's one puzzle I solved where it wasn't apparent what had happened. Uh, and you were supposed to remember, so that there were these little round dome-like things in the ground. And then when you activated a certain thing, they pop up. And then you go around and, and push the buttons in a certain order. And then they all pop back down to the ground. And there is also one of those things in the main square uh, and I had not recalled that it was there. And so when I solved that puzzle, I didn't know what had changed. Like, did I solve it? Did it, did it reset? I went back and tried to activate it again. No, it couldn't be activated again. So I guess it was solved. But what did it do? I don't know. So that was a, a weird thing where it was counting on you remembering that that, that was that thing there. And, and I went back and I was wandering around and I found it. Um, but that comes back to a problem that I mentioned on the diecast that there's a, a very linear path through this game that you have to follow. You're only given one key at a time and the key unlocks the next puzzle and solving the puzzle gives you the next key. With a few exceptions, it's not completely linear, but it is mostly linear. And so getting that puzzle and solving it and then not knowing what happened next kind of locked me into wandering around until I found what, I, what had changed because it wasn't like I could just solve that puzzle and then go off and do some more puzzles somewhere else and work on something else. That was it. Like, ooh, okay. And so it felt strange that there wasn't a clear indicator of uh, where that puzzle was leading. Um, and most of the puzzles, when you unlock them, the thing right in front of you changes. But that was an example. I think it's the only example in the game where something changed that was off screen and it wasn't clear what it was. So that was, a, again, a little bit... Uh, unfortunate design it wasn't bad it was just like it didn't uh it didn't communicate properly with the player or with the player character i suppose either it was a poor design on both the part of the character in the game and the game designer itself um so the the little sparkles that show up on the on the items when you can interact with them when you hold down alt they will often show up on things that used to be interactable but are no longer interactable so like you have a door handle or something, click on the door handle and open the door. And then the door handle will stay, when you hold down Alt, it'll stay with the glittery particle effect thing, even though you can't use it anymore. Like clicking on it doesn't do anything. And I don't, in a lot of cases, there didn't even, the icon for interaction, there's like a little, when you mouse over it with your cursor, there's a little icon that shows you can interact with stuff. That icon wouldn't even appear, but the particles still showed up. So like they had toggled something, but they hadn't connected the toggle for the, the interaction icon to the particle effect showing up. So it's just, again, it, like a little bit of a lack of polish where it wasn't really communicating properly about what you could interact with and what you couldn't. We talked about the gating on the diecast. Um, there's a native character, like a Native American kind of character that shows up in the, like this floating ball of light that's transcended the need for a mortal body. And... Uh, and that was all like, okay, that's, that's interesting. You, you spend long enough on this island that you can like meditate your way to, to transcendence or something. Uh, but <laughs> that wasn't the problem. The problem was that whenever this character showed up, 
it was to tell me how the guy who made all these puzzles is a bad dude and he needs to be stopped and I should side with the ball of light lady instead of with the machine guy. Um, but to make the case, the ball of light grabs your camera. Like you can't, it, you can't look away from it. It's just like camera view is locked on this ball of light. You can't interact with the game at all. You can't even skip it. You can't like press escape and skip the thing. It's just, you're sitting here stuck watching this in engine cutscene. And, uh, that did not endear me to that character or that, that character's viewpoint at all. So uh, I felt like they weren't doing their story any favors by antagonizing um, me, the player, by making it inconvenient for me to listen to what this person had to say. Like, at least the, the guy who makes the machines has letters, and you can read them if you want, and they're narrated. So you can just close the letter, and the narration keeps going. And you can cancel the narration if you'd like to. So there's, like, three ways in which you can choose what level of... three levels of interaction that you can choose for that character. But then the ball of light lady is just like, no, you don't have any choices. Like they forgot this was a game and they thought they were making a movie or something. And it's like, this is a dumb movie. The, this character is supposedly has like transcended the need for a portal, a mortal body. And is like so good at, they're supposedly a shaman. So good at like being in tune with nature or whatever that they can change the, the fabric of reality and uh, make you fly in the air and stuff or prevent you from falling, I guess. Um, but when they don't know how to talk to you, like they're all mystic and like vague and stuff. And they're supposedly trying to convince you that this is a bad idea to keep solving these puzzles or something like the, the, you should turn against this guy at a crucial moment later in the game, but they don't make their case in any way that's convincing. It's like, it's like they're this child that's trying to be profound. And so they can't say anything specific because then it'll be clear that what they're saying isn't profound. It's just nonsense. So that was, I mean, like, if you're going to put a character in a game that's supposedly so advanced in their thought and, and amazing, then you'd better spend a whole lot of time writing that character's lines of dialogue, because otherwise it just looks like you don't have the slightest clue what it means to have deep thoughts. Uh, anyway, that was not cool. Um, the color palette on the island is very gray. Uh, it made me really appreciate the witness and how colorful and vibrant it, the world was and how beautiful. And um, Corrin just is felt very washed out in comparison. And maybe that's what they were going for. Maybe it worked, but uh, it didn't feel nice to be there. Like I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't pleased to be on that island. It felt, it felt very gray and, and, uh, and kind of visually stale sterile it looks sterile and maybe again maybe that's what they wanted it's just that i didn't like it so uh you know um final puzzle was too easy again there's too much hand holding uh and there was a significant amount throughout the game of of execution labor like you'd see the solution to the puzzle and then you just had to like go through all the steps to execute the solution which doesn't feel like solving puzzles so much as doing chores to me um which i i didn't i didn't like now, maybe the execution is difficult for some people and like remembering the solution long enough in order to execute it is difficult. And uh, maybe I'm just some kind of genius, but like uh, it felt like the game wasn't giving you the option to solve the puzzle quickly once you had realized what the solution was. Uh, and there also weren't more than one solution to most puzzles, like one obvious solution, like a really good puzzle you can imagine solving it many different ways and it has enough enough depth that the solution isn't evident once you understand the mechanics or, or once you understand the first level of the mechanics like there's multiple layers of mechanics that you can understand and almost all the puzzles in this game were just a single layer of mechanics are just like once you grasp what it is that the puzzle is about then you know what the solution is um there were a few exceptions uh there was some some logic puzzles maybe a couple that required some analysis where like, oh, okay, I see how this works, but now I have to buckle down and like work through solving this problem. And, uh, and that was good. Um, the mastermind puzzle, I think was the, the most challenging. You have a key and you have to, it's, you're playing mastermind. It's a four, um, four bit mastermind thing or not bit four digit four. it had four, uh, it had four slots 
that you connect the put things in it goes numbers from one to nine or something like that and uh, and so you have to enter those in and then it tells you which ones are correct and which are no no it wasn't to nine it was to six one to six and you have four slots and so it tells you which ones are correct and or it tells you how many you got correct and how many are the right character but in the wrong place and then you have to you have a certain number of tries before it changes the code so it was mastermind and and like there's nothing wrong with mastermind um it was kind of a dumbed down simplified version of mastermind but it's still like okay that's pretty cool and uh and then they actually use that puzzle later or immediately uh for another puzzle so you use the key and then you pull the key out you use the key for the mastermind puzzle and then you pull the key out and then use it for a different puzzle that has to do with the shapes of the uh the pins on the key as opposed to the digits those pins are associated with and so you have to match the shapes instead of matching the uh the digits which uh, kind of brings us back to the thing i mentioned in the diecast about there's lots of reuse of puzzles not in the sense that they're reusing the puzzles themselves but in the sense they're reusing the elements of the puzzles in other puzzles and i really really like that about the design this i think it's the best thing about quern is that it's got a, a design that's woven together that the elements almost every element is used more than once in some two or three or even four times i think well maybe three times is the most but but they're used multiple ways to to uh make the most of every element and i thought that was just great uh however there was this other weird thing that i've noticed in other games um being an engineer when games talk about engineering i've noticed that there's a kind of idolization maybe or fetishization of engineering where the people who make these games seem to think that engineering is this mystical magical art and like engineers are these wizards that can do amazing things with with stuff and like like learning how to design machines is like learning how to write a magic spell and well i've had that thought uh it's not really true it's just kind of it has a resemblance <laughs> like <laughs> engineering is just a discipline of of moving energy and and material around like it's not some sort of some sort of mystical thing that allows you to do anything there are in fact the whole point of engineering is learning all the things you can't do <laughs> it's learning all the constraints on you when you're trying to make a machine so in this in corn in this game the the uh character talks about oh well i i I had all this time on my hands so i mastered art and i mastered uh craftsmanship and i learned how to do blacksmithing and wood carving and all these things and then i started to dabble in engineering and like like he'd had begun to like exercise some dark art or something and and uh I get what they're trying to say is like, okay, well, that's why there's all these machines everywhere. And, you know, like, that's how he built all this stuff. But like the, the tone of the, the tone given to engineering in here and also in like, uh, in satisfactory, in satisfactory, you're supposedly an engineer, like a, a field engineer or a combat engineer, whatever it is, like some sort of you know, engineer that you're engineering all this stuff but like you're not really you're just a construction person like you're not engineering anything i guess to a certain degree you're doing systems engineering where you're integrating a bunch of things together connecting them uh, or like industrial engineering where you're putting conveyor belts everywhere or something but like it's not really design engineering it's not like you're engineering a solution you're just kind of plugging stuff in uh and yeah that's the kind of design a lot of engineers do like but that doesn't mean that that's what engineering is like taking a bunch of parts off the shelf and and sticking them together and plugging them in uh and integrating them yeah i guess that's a kind of design but like making the parts themselves is the is the real engineering uh anyway at, at least as far as i'm concerned so it, it felt weird that there's this kind of like fantasy engineering where uh it's more like magic than like actual engineering uh let's see what else is there uh the gating keeps you on track uh oh yeah okay so the last thing i want to talk about is there's there's a part in one of the letters where he says uh you must be some kind of genius to have solved all my puzzles so far or maybe you just are using this island to spend an eternity brute forcing them all and, and i was like okay well first off yes actually 
I am a genius, like technically, I have a, a barely a genius level IQ. Like I think it's 146 or something like that. And the cutoff is 145. So technically a genius, but I didn't have to be a genius to solve these puzzles. This is the game developer. Finally, the game developer speaking to me, the player. <laughs> they're they're doing it in order to flatter me. And like guys, I just played your game. I know how difficult these puzzles were, and they weren't that difficult. You don't have to be a genius to solve these puzzles. And like flattering me on, oh wow, you're so good at solving puzzles. Oh man, it's yeah, this is incredible. When at the very beginning of the game, you told me, well, you don't have any choice. You just have to solve these puzzles. Like it's just it's like it's dissonant. You can't you can't tell me I don't have a choice but to do this thing and just somehow figure it out. And then later be like, wow, you're such a genius. Oh, it's amazing. How did you do that? <laughs> like, it feels sarcastic almost. It's not, it doesn't actually, it's not presented sarcastically, but it feels like it probably should be because it's so, it's such a dumb thing to say. Like, don't flatter someone on something that they had to do out of necessity. Like, they didn't choose to do this. And it's not any mark of merit or of, of the quality of their in intellect that they they're forced their way through this ostensibly the player character may spend centuries figuring out these puzzles like doesn't and and he says that he's like oh well maybe you just brute forced them but it's like well you, why did you write this at all like this is so weird it's again it's the it, this the letters feel like they're written by the game developer and and it's just poor writing it's just not very imaginative writing in order to write a character well you have to imagine yourself in that character's place you have to imagine that that you are that character and imagine the kind of things that that character would say and then on top of that what a character would write is possibly even more difficult because you can put more thought into writing something down than you can into saying something when you're speaking you have to speak off the cuff you have to speak extemporaneously unless it, you've written it down beforehand obviously but the uh the preparation that goes into writing something down allows you a greater deal of eloquence, a greater amount of eloquence that, that isn't accessible in uh, otherwise. And on top of that, these letters are supposed to be written by a guy who has spent literally centuries figuring out exactly how he wants to present his case to this person that he's going to trap on this island and make them solve all these puzzles. Like, these should be poetic in their eloquence. They should be completely flawless. They should be composed in an, an, an inhuman degree of perfection and it's just not like they aren't and and i understand like the game developer themselves doesn't have an infinite amount of time centuries and on which to write these things but at least take like a, a lot of effort and make it good like don't have these weird tonal problems don't speak directly to the the character as the game developer like speak from the the voice of the character that you're writing from and if you're gonna make it at a character that tells the player in the letter that they've spent a long time writing this down then either make it clear that this person is just a bozo and they have a huge amount of confidence in their work when they shouldn't which th you're not allowed to do in this game because all the machines work perfectly all the puzzles work flawlessly everything that this character wanted to accomplish they've accomplished so, like, this character clearly isn't an idiot. They clearly succeeded in everything. And it's that's hard. Like, I don't think people understand how difficult it is to make something that just works. Like, in the real world, engineering is fraught with banging up against all of the difficult problems of things not working the way that you expect them to work. And in a game, you can make it work the way you expect it to work, I mean, it's also hard, but you can make it work the way you expect it to work because you can force it to work that way. You can you can program it so that it can't work any other way. But like to prevent the the safe from being picked, like it's a it's a beautiful, perfect safe mechanism. You can't pick it. You can't listen to it. You can't like touch a picket. You just have to know the code. Uh, Oh, that was another thing that bugged me is there was a puzzle where you have to pull a slot machine lever and you just have to keep pulling it until it and maybe it only you have to do it three times but you have to keep pulling it until it gives you the solution and like you it all lines up and it's like hey yay you won and there's like seven tumblers or something so like the odds of it randomly lining up properly 
is almost zero. It's like one in a million. But the, uh, but for the purpose of the game, maybe in the maybe the conceit of the game is that your character just like pulls it a million times until it it all lines up. Like it just seems like such a waste of time to to make your character do that. And maybe that's the point. Like in the game, anyway, you can imagine a way in which it makes sense. But it was just it was annoying from a a play perspective of like okay. Is there some other thing I'm supposed to be doing other than pulling this lever? Like, this doesn't seem right in a puzzle game that there's this random slot machine mechanic. Uh, so anyway, but it's hard. It's hard to design a machine to work properly like that. And uh, and and so clearly the person who designed these machines is a smart person. And it feels odd for them to be so bad at writing. Uh, and And really, it just feels odd for the voice of the game developer to be coming through in the letters, ostensibly written by a character in the game to a character in the game. So those are my further thoughts on Quern. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, maybe I'll do some more of these later if I have more thoughts about stuff that I want to go over. Thanks for listening. Bye.